Hello everyone, you all know Thwomps, right? You know, the best Smash Ultimate Assist Trophy and Secret Mario Kart 64 character? Well, as it turns out, they actually got their start here in the Mario franchise, who would have thought? Now, we all know that Thwomps will go down and try to crush Mario if he goes underneath them. However, did you know that Thwomps, specifically in the Mario 1 and 3 game styles, will actually turn to face Mario depending on which side he is to them? It's hard to notice, but if you look closely, you can actually see the sprite flip in order to take a glance over at Mario. I would assume it'd be the same for Mario World, however, since Thwomps are symmetrical there, you can't actually see them flip. As it turns out, they actually do flip to face Mario in Mario U, it's just so hard to see that I didn't even notice until getting footage for this video. It's easy to see if you look at the very top to the sides of the middle spike. It's very hard to see, but yep, you can see it flipping around as well. Well anyways, welcome to the long-awaited second entry in my useless Mario Maker 2 fact series. The last episode came out 10 months ago, which wow, I really did not mean for it to be that much of a gap, and I know you all really enjoy the first episode, so I finally have been able to get around to making a second. Between the last 10 months, I've been documenting whatever I found some useless tidbit of knowledge whenever I played the game, so hopefully this episode is more interesting and more useless than ever. As you all know, this is just a fun look at some interesting hidden or small details in Mario Maker 2, like the Thorn thing I mentioned at the start. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed, so if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It means a lot, and it'll help me know to not wait 10 months to make another one of these. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the second installment of Useless Mario Maker 2 Facts. First, let's look at a few goofy animations from the Mario 3 style. Also, since my first episode was made before any of the updates, we'll be able to cover some facts about those items this time around, like this first fact here. In this style, Mario has a unique sprite for when he kicks things. If he's holding an item, in this case a snowball, and another one falls on top of him, he will actually use this sprite for a brief moment, even though he's holding something and it looks pretty weird. This is only the case with Mario 3, as I said, since it's the only one that actually has a unique look for Mario when he kicks something. Pretty useless if I do say so myself. I do have another one though, and unlike the last one where I kind of understand why it happens, the game just likely never checks for if Mario is holding something, this next one I'm not really entirely sure why this occurs. When Mario jumps and shoots a fireball in the air, he has a sprite for that so it actually shows him shooting the fireball. Makes sense. However, if Mario has a star equipped, he won't go into the fireball firing sprite and will instead shoot the fireball with a jumping sprite. This looks pretty funny because it's almost like Mario is breathing out the fire here instead of shooting it. Even though I'm not 100% sure why this happens, I do have a guess. In this style, Mario has a unique jumping animation when using a star and not at full P-speed. When Mario is in the spinning state, he also does a shift to the fireball throwing sprite as well, which I imagine carries over to the P-speed jump. The thing is though, the P-speed jump doesn't change if Mario has a star or not, so it's really weird that it will only update if Mario doesn't have one. Now obviously the spinning animation not being cancelled into the firing animation is intentional, as Mario U and 3D World do the same thing here. However, since Mario 3 has two different jump animations depending on speed, it's possible they just completely overlooked this and now we have Mario breathing out fire, which I actually kind of like. Speaking of some fun animation things, did you know that you can enter pipes backwards? Yeah, by doing certain things, you're able to actually enter a sideways pipe while backing up into them. The easiest way to do this is with the Master Sword, where all you have to do is hold down your bow, and since you can already walk backwards while doing this, just simply walk backwards into the pipe and boom. If you have either a Super Leaf or Cape Feather equipped, and then back up into the pipe while looking away from it, then all you have to do is do your spin attack, and then right after you press the Y button, hold into the pipe. If done correctly, Mario will again enter in backwards. The final method of doing this that I know of is that you can do the same thing you did with the previous power-ups, however this time with Yoshi and his tongue. Then you can both go backwards together. Interestingly though, this actually doesn't work in Mario U. I'm not exactly sure why this doesn't work here, I guess they just handle animations into pipes differently in this game style. Also, I should mention that this works with Fire Yoshis in the Mario World style as well. As the series implies, walking into pipes backwards is completely useless. You don't come out the other end backwards as well, so it's purely an animation thing when entering. I still find it fun to try and do whenever I play levels where these conditions can be met, so if you know of any other ways to enter pipes backwards like this, let me know. This next one is sort of bordering on actually being useless, however it's close enough, so don't be such a killjoy. In Mario World, Goombas are replaced by the superior Galoombas, which can actually be thrown around. When they're hit, they'll flip upside down, and if you throw them into a clown car, they'll actually drive around the clown car upside down. The reason I'm saying this one's only bordering on being useless is since the Galoomba is flipped upside down here, he can't actually hurt Mario, unlike when the normal Galoomba is in a clown car. Mario could also just instantly pick it up when jumping into the clown car, so yeah, it's not fully useless, though I can't really think of any good uses for it. Enemies like the Shell Boys, Koopas, Spinies, and Buzzy Beetles can also be flipped upside down in the clown cars if they get hit from below and then get into one. 
However, unlike the Galoomba, they'll actually return to normal after a while, which is pretty weird. Why would they specifically code the Galoomba to not do its get-up animation while in a clown car when seemingly everything else will still do theirs? The lava bubbles are another funny one, as if you place them into the clown car in the editor, they'll be straight up. However, if the lava bubble falls into it, then they'll be in the clown car upside down too. This one could join the Galoombas in the cool party though, since this one will actually correct itself, unlike the other ones. Next, we have a few to do with the game's item renders. As you all know, the items in the hotbar and selection wheels all have icons to, of course, represent them. However, a few of them you can't actually see in this menu and instead have to go to the clear conditions menu to see. Like the hotbar, the clear conditions will show an image related to what you have to do to complete the next objective. Barring the obvious ones like the don't take damage or don't land on the ground icons, a few enemies actually only have icons in here. The first one is the bullet bill. Since you never actually place down bullet bills, only the launchers, you never actually get to see them in the hotbar. Since defeating them is a clear condition, however, you can actually see what they would have looked like in the hotbar right here. Also, as it turns out, 3D World uses the exact same bullet bill render as Mario U. The Sledge Bros are like this as well, however, the reason they never show up is unlike pretty much every other enemy with an alternate form in the game, like Koopas for example. Instead of the Sledge Bro being an alternate form of the Hammer Bro, it's actually what the Hammer Bro becomes once it gets a Super Mushroom. It's pretty interesting that the game classes the Hammer Bro and Sledge Bros as different enemies, which can be helpful in some levels. But this series isn't about useful, so in our case, we only actually care about seeing the Sledge Bros' beautiful renders. Actually, in 3D World though, you can see the Sledge Bros' renders without having to go into the Clear Conditions menu, since their Hammer Bros can be turned into Fire Bros, so they would have to show a render there so that you'd be able to switch them. Pretty stupid that Fire Bros aren't in the other themes since they appeared in Mario 3, but whatever. Since I'm already on the topic of Hammer Bros, the video game up pointed out that if you shake a Hammer Bro in the editor, he'll actually throw a hammer, which is pretty neat. Except in 3D World though, if you shake them there, they'll just stand there. Menacingly! This is the first one from this video coming from you all, and I wanted to mention that when I make my list, I'll go through the comments to look for them, so if you have any more, let me know, and if it's useless and interesting enough, I'll make sure to feature it. Speaking of you guys, this will also be the first episode in the series where I'll ask you all a question on Twitter, and whoever gets it right will earn a shoutout in the next part. This is of course inspired by P. Jiggle's Twitter questions in his Useless Smash Facts series, which is of course the inspiration behind this series, but I'll make sure to make them extra tricky and of course Mario Maker instead of Smash for his case. Anyways, this episode's question was what do these 19 enemies have in common that none of the other enemies in the game do? And the answer was, drumroll please. Yeah, that's close enough. Anyways, the answer was that these were the enemies that appear in the Mario build that you unlock as the final reward in story mode. We've got the Goomba, Big Goomba, Goombrat, Koopa Troopa, Dry Bones, Dry Bones for Smash, Rocky Wrench, Multi Mole, Buzzy Beetle, ba -bomb, Lip Ba Bomb, Big Lip Ba Bomb, Boom Boom, Spike Top, Piranha Plant, Cheap Cheap Boo, Boo Stretch Spiny, and finally the Koopa Clown Car. The first person to get this right was my boy Kyvit, which many of you may know for creating my channel icon and banner. Oh, I still haven't changed it yet. Anyways, yeah, Kyvit is the winner for the first Twitter question in this series, so make sure to go check out his Twitter with the link in the description. My Twitter will also be there if you want to participate next time around. It took a little less than 9 hours for this one to be answered, so that's a good estimate for how long they'll probably take. Let me know if this question seemed too easy, by the way. This is my first time doing something like this, and I want to make sure that these types of questions are good, so if you all have any ideas, then make sure to tell me. Well anyways, back into the main facts, did you know that if you use a pea balloon and the screen doesn't scroll vertically due to there being nothing on the top set of screens, then Mario actually won't go all the way up to the very top. Instead, he'll stop about here, which we can see thanks to Mario's trail in the editor. I was holding A for a really long time here, so I should have easily been able to go higher if I was able to. I'm not sure why they didn't have him just go all the way up here, but it's an interesting tidbit nonetheless. While on the topic of power-ups, as pointed out by Swampert, the Master Sword and Frog Suit are the only two power-ups that will change depending on if the game's in multiplayer or not. For the Master Sword, regardless of who you're playing as in single player, you will always be Link's default green appearance. Even if you're Toad or Toadette. In multiplayer, however, this of course changes to where everyone gets their own color so that you can tell who's who. The same thing goes for the Frog Suit, however, only Mario changes from green in single player to red in multiplayer. Also, I just find it really funny how Luigi just uses the exact same sprite as Mario in single player for this with absolutely no changes. I mean, it makes sense since Luigi has to be green, but it's still pretty funny. Normally, when you die in Mario 1 or 3, you will revert back to small Mario. However, if you die to lava or poison, you can actually have a Goomba shoot in your death animation. This looks so weird, but it's kind of neat. You can also see Mario's foot sticking out if he died in a small stiletto as well. As far as I can tell, this is the only item that this will work with, but it's still nice to see nonetheless. Also, I had no idea that Goomba stilettos have different walking sound effects during the nighttime, which really confused me and caught me off guard when I was getting footage. Take a listen.
Now on to a few about everyone's favorite Koopalings. Well, I would say that, but people hate on these guys for some reason. I personally like them a lot. Anyways, did you know that their hotbar renders in Mario U are actually their renders from New Super Mario Bros. Wii and not Super Mario Bros. U? Well, with the exception of maybe Larry, only because this render is the exact same between the two games. I find it pretty interesting, though, that so much of Mario U and Mario Maker is more reflective of Mario Wii. Of course, I had the propeller mushroom instead of the Super Acorn for the longest time, but I honestly didn't really mind. I think Mario Wii is much better than U anyway, so the more from that, the better. This next one here might be my favorite one from this video, though, just because it's so bizarre. This one comes from 8BitGabe, and he says that if you jump onto a Koopaling while they're in a clown car to force them into their shell state, then ground pound into them in just the right way, then Mario will perform a spin jump off of them without doing a spin jump. For context, this is what happens when you spin jump on them. Notice the sound effect and visual indicator. And this is what happens when you normally just land on them. For some reason, if you do everything he says correctly, it will make the sound and show the effect as if Mario is spin jumping on them, even though he isn't. I have absolutely no clue why this even works at all. This is the most specific and mind-boggling fact in the series so far that I can't even begin to come up with any sort of explanation for this. This will probably remain a complete mystery to me forever, and to be honest, I think it's cooler that way. Next we have ourselves a few that are exclusive to the editor. I've known this next one for a while, but it was brought back up to me by Swampert again. Basically, whenever you bring the eraser close to Mario, he cowers in fear, as he obviously doesn't want to be erased. However, Mario will also do this if a burner is dragged up to him. This is a nice little detail, but it's super weird to me. Why do only burners cause Mario to do this instead of literally anything else? Heck, even Firebars or the Angry Sun don't even make him do this, so what's so special about burners? It's a cool little detail nonetheless, but it's just super weird and specific that they never really gave this to anything else. Another nice editor tool in the game is the Mario Ghost Trail, which is very helpful to judge where the player can and can't jump and such. Usually, Mario's ghost will update with whatever power-up he has equipped. There are, however, three items that Mario can equip in this menu that won't show up at all in the Ghost Trail. Those being the Star, Shelmet, and Spiny Shelmet. They will instead not update Mario's sprite at all, and will just leave it like how it was without them. The star is pretty interesting, as we can use the star not showing up to see what each of the Marios that have a unique jump look like when they aren't rainbow colored. I do believe it's possible to see these non-rainbow sprites during actual gameplay, but for no more than a few frames, so this is a nicer way to look at these. The shell mitts to me are very weird though, because I don't understand why they don't show up, especially since the dry bone shell does actually show up on the ghost trail. Guess dry bones really is just that much better, huh? Speaking of the Dry Bone Shell, let's go through a few about that item, as we actually have a decent amount here. First off, as pointed out by Purple Prowler, if Mario is in his playing dead state, he won't actually grab the flagpole. I imagine this was some sort of side effect of making him invincible to enemy attacks. He also won't interact with bumpers in this state, however that can actually be helpful. Mario can still collect coins while in this state, so it's not like he's 100% intangible to everything. So making him not grab the flagpole is pretty interesting to me. The only other way Mario can go through flagpoles that I know of is if he doesn't have a clear condition in order to hit it, though that doesn't really count. The dry bone shell will count as a jump whenever he has to move, since, well, he has to hop around in order to move at all. Funnily enough, though, the respawn platform that will appear whenever you start in the editor in the void goes away after you jump. So all you have to do is move slightly, and yep, you're falling to your death. Something I didn't know on top of this, though, is that if you jump pretty much the second the platform spawns in, it actually won't go away. I'm not entirely sure why, but if you can jump and land quick enough as the platform spawns in, then it actually won't disappear upon that jump. The last Dry Bones related fact is that the Undo Dog sucks at making jokes. I just wanted to hear a nice funny joke after writing out the Twitter question, and he just tells me, what do you call a sad Dry Bones? A Cry Bones. That's not funny. Dry Bones should never be sad, so this was horribly unfunny Undo Dog, and I don't care if you disagree. It's a certified fact that the Undo Dog is unfunny, and quite frankly, I feel like taking legal action since I paid for a joke, not whatever that was. Alright, now let's go through two relating to the snake blocks. First off, as pointed out by S9Rod, you normally can't have a snake block's path overlap the item itself. However, if you make the path go behind them and then you extend the snake block on top of the path, it'll actually be able to overlap it. If you make the snake block long enough, you can actually see it overlapping itself in gameplay as well. I was curious if this would work for multiple snake blocks, but for some reason you aren't able to stretch a snake block into a different snake block's path. Our second snake block one comes from Dodrio Adventurers, and they say that you can activate a snake block through a bridge, but not through a semi-solid. This seems to imply to me that bridges are actually a slight bit shorter than semi-solids. 
Since there are multiple other platforms like this where Mario can land on them and jump through them, I decided to test each one of them to see which ones you can activate a snake block on and which ones you can't. You can activate them while standing on bridges, one-way platforms, lifts, lava lifts, and donut blocks when placed on a track. Though that last one may be due to it shaking, though I'm pretty sure it isn't. You aren't able to activate snake blocks, however, while standing on semi-solids, mushroom platforms, seesaw platforms as long as you don't tilt it, and finally clouds on tracks. An additional thing I learned while testing this out is that in the editor, seesaw platforms, lava lifts, and lifts will appear in front of snake blocks. However, in gameplay, they'll actually appear behind them. You can use this to completely cover a lava lift if you really want to for whatever reason. Maybe for a troll level or something, I don't know. Now those snake block facts may have come off as useful to some of you, and that's where I say, snake blocks are garbage, so anything related to them is useless. Alright, now it's time to run through a few miscellaneous ones that don't really fit into any of the sections I made. First off, ground decorations will still spawn on top of ground blocks even at the top of the ceiling. I guess this makes sense to do since there's no real reason to disable it up there, but it's still kind of interesting. This next one from Isaac Eyes says that if you slide down a steep slope as the water level lowers, then Mario will kind of freak out, which he does. Look at him go. We have a really interesting one now from Jimbo's Fever Dream. Yoshi is able to eat spike balls, however if Yoshi eats the spike ball as Spike is preparing to throw it, he still completes the full animation. On top of that though, he will also still make the sound effect as well. Take a listen. This only works in Mario U though, since in Mario World, Spike will just return to his normal stance after the spike ball gets eaten. Spike will also return to the normal stance in Mario U if you eat the spike ball too soon, so just make sure to eat it while he's throwing it. Another Yoshi fact I found while messing around with this one is that since Mario with the pea balloon obviously can't ride Yoshi, it will kick him off if he picks one up. When Mario is powering up though, you can see that Yoshi's neck will actually overlap Mario, but his body won't. Another similar one is that if you have a clear condition set to riding a Yoshi, and place a Yoshi egg and a pea balloon on the same tile, then there's a chance that Mario will ride Yoshi for a split second, causing the flag to activate, but then immediately dismount as pea balloon Mario. This will cause you to not clear the level, even though you are in the flagpole with the clear condition completed. Here it is again, but in slow motion. I find this one super interesting, as Mario should have cleared the stage since he was inside the flagpole with the clear condition complete. This seems to imply to me that maybe the flag doesn't check for completion every frame, or maybe it gives priority to power-ups or something, since we can ride Yoshi for a frame inside the flag without clearing the level. Okay, so for the final fact of the video, we have another pretty interesting one. If you all didn't know, if you tap on the doors in the editor, Lanky Mario will pop out sporting different looks depending on the game style and their power-ups. Here's a really quick run-through of all of them. The reason I wanted to show them all to you was because there's actually a way you can use them in your level thumbnails. I first discovered this while I went to go get footage for the secrets video and I noticed this level and was super perplexed by seeing Linky Mario there. Anyways, here's the level ID just in case you want to check this level out. Anyways, if you want to use Linky Mario in your thumbnail, it's actually kind of challenging to do. You have to knock on the door to get Linky Mario to appear and then you have to click save or save as the instant you see Linky Mario because if you don't then you'll be too slow. I'm not exactly sure what the timing is, but to me, it seems like you only have a few frames to do all the inputs. This will be a unique way to catch someone's attention, so if your level thumbnail has a door, why not also throw in a Linky Mario as well? He really needs all the representation he can get after being removed from Mario Maker 2. I guess you could argue that this is more on the useful side than the useless side, but I really wanted to share this one as I personally found it very interesting. But anyways, that's it for the second installment of Useless Mario Maker 2 Facts. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll try to make the next one come out much quicker. I really enjoyed making this one, and I feel like the facts here were much more useless and interesting than the first parts were, so hopefully part 3, if I decide to make one, will also be even more interesting. I'm sorry that this one took such a long time to make, but I really wanted to make sure that I did it right, because these are a lot of work to do, so I definitely didn't want to rush this video. If you all have any more useless facts, let me know in the comments down below, because I did take a few from the last episode for this episode. Also, if you want to participate in the Twitter questions, then make sure to go follow me and our winner from last round, Kaiba, in the description. Also, I don't really have any useless Mario Maker 2 fact-related things for my Discord server, but join it anyways, it's great. Sometimes. Rarely. Well, anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.